pain. So this first one is x is less than or equal to 4. Ismail, what did you get for the second one, where it says x is 7 or bigger? No, it's going to be less than or equal to 6. And I'm going to explain to you why it's less than or equal to 6. This says that x is greater than or equal to 7, which really means I'm looking for 7, 8, 9, 10. OK, good. Well, anyway, that way I'm removing all of the ones that say 6 or less. This one, you're right. You're right. This one is it's less than or equal to 7. Because here, I want things that are bigger than 7, which means I only want 8, 9, and 10. So I had to remove everything that was 7 or less. OK? What about the fourth one? Did you want to do the fourth one, Sadia? Um, I think P, no, wait, what? It is P less than or equal to 19. Good. Minus 1 minus x is less than or equal to 9. I think you can just remove. You don't need to do the 1 minus part of it. OK, because if you think about what you've got here, we want 10, 11, 12, blah, 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 all the way up to 19. So I like that you started off with the less than or equal to 19, but we're just removing the ones that are less than or equal to 9. We don't need to do any 1 minus or anything there, because that's just removing all of the ones that go up to 9. No, no. What about this one that we've got here? Anyone got this one done for me? Um, Muzike? X is equal to less than 20. Good. Minus X is equal to less than 9. Good. So it's the same as this question, apart from this time. It's including a 20, which means we need to change that one to a 20. What about this one, Muzike? You, you were thinking about that one before. How you do in using cumulative probabilities that it's 100? Um, so what I was thinking was, if you, if you only want 100, yeah. then you want to remove all the other 99 possibilities. Good. So we're going to remove all of the ones up to 99. And so this first statement should be uh, x is equal to less than 100. good. So we're going all the way up to 100, and we're taking all the way up to 99. Now, obviously, you could put on your calculator, or you could do the other method of using the formula. You could obviously just type the prob on the probability distribution rather than the cumulative distribution. But the whole point that we're playing on this, this exercise is like a game. How can we make everything a cumulative one? Okay. And then this one, this says that x is between 20 and 30, which means 21, 22, all the way up to 29. I always find just like writing out the numbers really helps my brain to do it. So I would recommend you doing that if you know this is something you make a slip up with. And everyone makes slip ups with these kinds of things. So what do you think this one should be? Sadi, do you want to do this one as well for me? Good. Twenty or twenty-one? Twenty. Twenty, because if you got the twenty-one there, you would have removed the twenty-one as well. We only want to remove the twenties or less. Okay? So this one says the probability that x is at least thirty. So really, does that mean it's allowed to be thirty if it says it's at least thirty? Yeah. So that means it's thirty, thirty-one. 32. So we're actually saying the probability that x is greater than or equal to 30, which is what? Good. We take away everything that's below 29 from it to get everything that's above instead. Greater than 30 means it's not allowed to be 30. It has to be bigger than 30. So we're actually saying, what's the probability that x is bigger than 30? Again, if you just do a little sketch of the numbers, we now just want 31, 32. So it's going to be 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 30 in this particular case that we've got here. Okay. Now, this will all be used probably in the second half of today's lesson, where we reverse the probabilities. Um, I think this is probably the better way of reversing the probabilities than maybe ways that you've done it before. But some of you are very, very good on the calculators. So if I'm showing you something and you go like, I can do this just fine, I always get full marks in these questions, then that's absolutely fine as well. Okay. So we're going to dive in with a bit of an example here. And it's got a second part to it that I think makes this a bit more of an interesting example. So it says, in a computer game, you have 20 attempts to try and knock off some monkeys from a tree branch. The probability of knocking a monkey off a tree branch is 0 
determine the probability that someone knocks less than six monkeys off the branch. Determine the probability that someone knocks at least nine monkeys off the branch. So imagine you were just playing this game completely randomly then. How many monkeys would you expect in playing a game that you would knock off? Six. Yeah, because you've got the probability is 20, you've got 0 0.3. GCSE, you would say, okay, I think someone's going to knock six monkeys off. But we know in real life, there's going to be a range of different things that might happen here. So to start off with, we can say, let x be the number of monkeys knocked off the tree. Does anyone know what this is called, this thing that we've just defined here, x? No, this is actually what we call the test statistic. And we'll talk about this later on when we do the hypothesis testing. But this is called the test statistic. What's the thing that you're measuring? When you're measuring how many monkeys get knocked off the tree branch. And we could say that x is binomially distributed with a trial of 20, because that's how many times we're going to try and uh, that's the number of attempts you've got. And the probability is 0 0.3. So it's important you write this statement down here. And they might say to you, why have you modeled it binomially? And you could go through, there's a fixed number of trials, there's two outcomes, you know, <laughs> the, the four things. They're independent, and there's what's the last one? Fixed probability. There you go. So there's the four things. And you could mention one, two, three, whatever they ask for, for that, OK? Once we've got to this stage, we now want to find out what's the probability that they knock that x is less than six monkeys, OK? Now, again, you could do this on your calculator straight away. But the probability that x is less than six is the same as the probability that x is less than or equal to five. And then you can go straight in with the calculator to show what this probability is. How much, sorry? 0 0.4164, OK? Part B of the question says, what's the probability that the number of monkeys that you knock off the tree branch is at least nine? It's got to be greater than or equal to nine, because at least means it's allowed to be nine. So the probability that something is greater than or equal to nine is one minus the probability. Good. Now, I'm going to do this without my calculator. I'm actually going to just do this with the table for a second, because I kind of like using the table. So if I go to my table, this is with 20 and a probability of 0 0.3. So you should have a look at this as well. So I'm going to just put my page here at the 0 0.3 probability. And I'm going to do it with just tables for a change. And you can see that the 20 bit is over here. So I'm looking at this column. And I'm interested in it being less than or equal to 8. So less than or equal to 8 looks like this probability here which is 0.8867. Okay, I'm sure you can get that on your calculator as well, but I wanted to show you some things with the table. So that's 1 minus 0 0.8867, which I can do in my head, which is 0 0.1133. Because add to 9, add to 9, add to 9, add to 10. Okay? So that's the probability of you playing this game and you knock more than 9 monkeys off the tree branch. It's quite rare, so an 11% chance of this happening. OK, part C of the question is where I think things get interesting. And this is why I wanted to do this example again. Because you know what? I know you can all do this already. But it's there to build us into what we do later. It says the game gives you a prize of one banana if you knock at least nine monkeys off the branch. A student plays the game five times. Calculate the probability that they win at least four bananas. So this question has gone from being about playing a single game 20 times, within one game, sorry. And now we're going to play that game five times. So we're kind of like zooming out from playing something 20 times, trying to knock the monkeys off the branch. And now we've zoomed out, and we're actually trying to play that game five times. So we've got a new statistic here. We're going to let y be the number of games. I win, or they win, not I win. I don't know why I'm the one that's playing the game. The number of games I win a banana in. What's the probability that I win a banana? 
good. The probability I win a banana is 0 0.1133. So I can now say that y is binomially distributed, and I know that the probability is 0 0.1133. And ha what's, why is it 5? Yeah, because look, the student is playing the game five times. So it's a, bin a binomial question about the previous binomial question. And the reason I'm allowed to use binomial here is because there's a fixed probability, there's a fixed number of trials, it's independent, I either win a banana, sorry, it's independent of each other, the five games, and I can either win a banana or not win a banana, okay? And the thing I'm interested in is the probability that I win at least four bananas. Do you think I'm likely to win at least four bananas in this game? No, because look, the probability of winning a banana is only 11%. So if I'm likely to get four bananas, that's pretty rare occurrence to happen, okay? Because if it's only an 11% chance I win one banana, it's going to be pretty difficult for me to win four, uh, four bananas. So I'm trying to find out what is the probability that it's greater than or equal to four, which is one minus the probability that it's less than or equal to three. Now this bit, I can't do on my tables. Why can I not do this on my tables? There's no 0 0.1133 in the tables. So if you don't have it in the table, you've then got to do it using the calculator instead. Now your graphics calculators, you could obviously just put between four and five. The other one, you would have to do one minus this one that we've got here. So I'm gonna do the, the other calculators version of it. So we want it between zero and three. Five trials, probability is 0.1133. So it becomes 1 minus 0.9992575, which I can see is 0 0.00075. I can just stop there. And if I change that to a percentage, I'm going to say that it would be 0.075%. Okay? 0.075%. Which is very, very rare. And this is a little flavor of what's to come with hypothesis testing. If there is a person who is, plays this game, and pretty consistently when they play this game, they get four or five bananas, the probability of that person knocking a monkey off the tree is probably not 0 0.3. What does it tell you about that person who plays that game if they're always going to be getting four or five bananas? Their probability is much higher. They're probably not like the rest of the population. They are probably really good at playing this game where you knock the monkey off the tree. And that is what hypothesis testing is. Hypothesis testing is saying, let's look at, the pro let's look at this person who always seems to be getting a really high extreme value of getting four or five bananas, and let's figure out, are they just lucky? Or actually, is their probability better? Have they gotten really, really good at playing this game of knocking the monkeys off the tree? So I thought we'll do a few of these questions. Um, and if you're interested in doing this one where there's a binomial within a binomial, it's the mixed exercise six, question 15. Otherwise, we'll have a look at some questions from exercise 6C. We'll only do about 10 minutes on this, and then we'll look at doing some other practice. You can do the rest of these at home as well.